In this video, you can practice IELTS yes no non given or true false non given questions with me. Before you start answering questions, quickly skim through the passage to get a general understanding of the topic. This will help you to locate specific information more easily. If there are headings given in the passage, you can just read the headings and a few lines after the headings to know what information is found where. Because when you will be answering the questions, you will have to read the passage again with more attention to details. The trick of answering yes, no, not given or true, false, not given questions is that a statement is yes or true if it 100% agrees to the views of the writer and is more likely to be clearly mentioned in the passage. A statement is considered false or no if it completely contradicts with the views of the writer whereas a statement is considered not given if and only if you cannot make a 100% yes-no decision about that after reading the passage. So let's start answering the questions. This is the reading passage that I have selected. I have already read this passage and highlighted the relevant information. Um, you can find the link for this passage in the description below. In this passage, I have highlighted the text which is relevant to yes answers with green color, for no answers with red color, and for not given answers with blue color. So let's start our first question. That is question number 15 here. And in this question, the statement is, it seems predictable that some species will disappear. Okay, we'll read the passage now. The future never dies. The prospects for humanity and for the world as a whole are somewhere between glorious and dire. It is hard to be much more precise. By glorious, I mean many of those fellow species now seem bound to become extinct, but a significant proportion could and should continue to live alongside us. If we move on to the next paragraph, it says that dire means that huge number of our fellow creatures would simply disappear so the writer says that um, in the first line the writer says that the future of humanity is somewhere between glorious and dire and in the first paragraph it is explaining that by glorious it means that some species will disappear uh, however in b paragraph it says that huge number of species will disappear so how will we decide we will read the last line of the paragraph B. It says that I am taking it to be self-evident that glorious is preferable. The writer here explains that he prefers the glorious point of view. So we will neglect the dire uh, point of view and we will move to paragraph A where he is explaining what he means by glorious. And it says that some of the species will become extent and a significant proportion will live. Now we'll move back to the question where it says that it seems predictable that some species will disappear. So it's a 100% match uh, and we can easily decide that it is a yes statement. After answering this question, we have also learned that we cannot decide a yes no decision by reading just one statement in the passage. If there are other statements related to that topic in the passage, we have to analyze them as well to answer our question correctly. Moving on to the next question. The nature of the earth and human biology make it impossible for human beings to survive another million years. In the very first paragraph, you can see all who are born onto this earth could live comfortably and securely and could continue to do so for as long as the earth can support life which should be for a very long time indeed we should at least be thinking in terms of next million years so it's saying that the earth supports life for at least next million years and in the same paragraph the last line also says there is nothing in the physical fabric of the earth or in our own biology to suggest that this is not possible so the passage saying that it is very much possible that the humans uh, can live for another million years. So the statement is no.
because it contradicts with what is written in the passage. Moving on to question number 17, the statement made is, an eruption by Yellowstone is likely to be more destructive than previous volcanic eruptions. When I first read the passage, I found that volcanoes are discussed in paragraph D. So I have already highlighted the relevant information. It says, yet nothing we have experienced, we have so far experienced shows what volcanoes can really do. Yellowstone National Park in the USA occupies the caldera of an exceedingly ancient volcano of extraordinary magnitude. Modern surveys show that its center is now rising. Sometime in the next 200 million years, Yellowstone could erupt again and when it does, the whole world will be transformed. So, the passage says that Yellowstone is a volcano of extraordinary magnitude and if it erupts again, then its impact will be huge. So, its impact will not be like the volcanoes we have seen before. It, it is going to transform the whole world. Now, we'll move to the question and see what it says. It says an eruption by Yellowstone is likely to be more destructive than previous volcanic eruptions. So, it's you can see that it's matching with what is given in the passage. So, we can easily decide that it is also a yes statement. Question number 18. There is a greater chance of the Earth being hit by small asteroids than large ones. Asteroids are discussed in paragraph E and F. The universe at large is dangerous too. In particular, we share the sky with vast numbers of asteroids. And now and again, they come into our planet's atmosphere. An asteroid the size of a small island hitting the Earth at 15,000 kilometers an hour, a relatively modest speed by standards of heavenly bodies, would strike the ocean bed like a rock in a puddle, send a tidal wave around the world as high as a small mountain and as fast as a jumbo jet, and propel us into an ice age that could last for centuries. There are plans to head off such disasters, including rockets to push approaching asteroids into new trajectories, but in truth, it's down to luck. On the other hand, the archaeological and the fossil evidence shows that no truly devastating asteroid has struck since the one that seems to have accounted for the extinction of the dinosaur dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Let's go back to our question, which says, there is a greater chance of the Earth being hit by small asteroids than large ones. I have already read everything that is written in the passage related to the asteroids and you can see that there is not a single statement in the entire passage which agrees to the statement made in question 18 or which negates the statement made in question 18. So we can say that this statement is not given in the passage. There is a lot mentioned about asteroids in the passage but this particular statement is not made. So we will say that this is a not given statement. Moving on to the last two questions. The statement made in question 19 is, if the world becomes uninhabitable, it is most likely to be as a result of a natural disaster. To answer this question, I have highlighted a statement made in paragraph F and it says that if the world does become inhospitable in the next few thousand or million years then it will probably be our own fault. So the statement uh, in the paragraph which is uh, which is the statement made by the writer is uh, that the if the world becomes inhospitable in the next few thousand years then it will be our own fault. However the statement uh, which is given in question 19 is if the world becomes uninhabitable it is likely to be as a result of a natural disaster so these are two contradictory statements so we can say that this is a false statement because the statement 
does not agree with the statement made in the paragraph. So we can decide that this is a false or a no statement. The last question. Politicians currently in power seem unlikely to change their way of thinking. Something related to politics is given in paragraph G. I have highlighted the relevant information. It says, given average luck on the geological and the cosmic scale, the difference between glory and disaster will be made and is being made by politics. Certain kinds of political systems and strategies would predispose us to long-term survival and indeed to comfort and security and pleasure of being alive while others would take us more and more fanatically towards collapse. The broad point is though that we need to look at ourselves, humanity and at the world in general in, quite, in a quite new light. Our material problems are fundamentally those of biology. We need to think and we need our politicians to think biologically. Do that and take that idea seriously and we are in with a chance Ignore biology and we and our fellow creatures haven't a hope. So in all of this, these uh, lines that I've read here, there's nothing where uh, it, it is written clearly that politicians in power are likely to change their way of thinking or something like that. So we cannot make a decision about this statement that is uh, in question 20. Either we cannot say it's a yes or a true statement or it's a false statement. We can just say that it's not given in the passage. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.